Hello everyone and in today's video we are going to discuss three best chess openings played from the white and the black side. Guys just remember playing a good opening uh, results in a good middle game and a good middle game results in a good end game. You should always try to play a good opening so that you all will you will always always land in a good position. So you can just check out the games of grandmasters in the top level they already prepare a good opening. That is the reason, that is the main reason they land in a good position and they already know the ideas of, of the opening they are playing. So once you, you are already selecting an opening, just stick to it. Don't leave it uh, like if you, if you lose one or two games or like perhaps 10 games and you just think that the opening is simply bad and you just lose it and you just try to change the opening. Just don't do it. Try to stick to a one particular opening. That is the main purpose I'm showing you this video. I'm going to recommend you three best chess opening from played from the white and the black side and you can choose any one of them or perhaps any two or perhaps even all the three openings you can choose. And, but just stick to them. Try to play that opening many times on the online games of Lee Chess and Chess.com, any online chess website you try to, you play like on TV Chess 24 and etc. Uh, so first we are going to discuss three best openings I'm going to discuss from the white side. And guys, the opening that I'm going to recommend you is, that is the best opening from my opinion. Uh, other chess players ha can have a different opinions, but I think the opening that I'm going to recommend you is going to be very interesting and uh, you will always land in a very comfortable position. So definitely let's check it out what happens, uh, what can be the three best openings from the white side. So let's quickly check it out. So from the white side, the first opening that I'm going to recommend you is to play one e4. The reason is quite simple. Uh, you you must have noticed that this this move one e4 is played highly on the high, higher level every chess games or even even the lower level chess. Even if you try to go in any coaching of chess, the coaches will tell you to play one e4. The, re the reason is quite simple. First, you are, first of all, you take control of the two cent square. Second, it opens up the bishop and the queen, the two minor pieces. That is the main reason uh, this is the most highly played move because it first of all takes control of the crucial center, which is very important in chess. So now after e4, there could be four different replies that are highly played in 99% of the time. Like e6, e5, c6, and c5. These four are the most common of the 99% of the replies that you will receive in after playing 1e4. This opening is known as the French, this opening is the known as the Karukan, this opening is known as the Brazilian, and we have the standard king's pawn opening after e5. So first we are going to discuss 1e5, e uh, 1e4 and e5. After e5 there are already very different methods to play the continue the opening. You can play d4, c3, sacrificing two pawns getting a lead in development and you can have a good position but i must tell you to play knight f3 because in the long run you will eventually get to know that playing these moves like developing the pieces making the king safe trying to go for breaking up the center is the most crucial part so for example after knight f3 black continues with knight c6 now there are two main moves, you can play bishop c4 to the italian or you can play bishop to b5. Uh, you can, uh, both the moves are completely fine. But bishop c4 I think uh, is going to be uh, very interesting if you are a low level player. Bishop b5 is already also very interesting, it has the rule of pace, it has a large theory on it. Even the italian have a large theory on it and actually. In the Italian, there is a video on Chess Base India where Anish Giri uh, taught the Italian. You can just check out check out that video. It's very nice, yeah, because Anish Giri is a very strong chess, the very strong grandmaster from the Netherlands. So he just taught the uh, the Italian opening, and it's it's a very interesting opening. First of all, after Knight F6, uh, you see there are players who try to go for this, going for this going for that same point but okay their best reply is d5 and the line goes on but the best theory says is to play d3 and after something like bishop c5 black is also trying to develop 
you can play simply castle black and castle and there are already very uh, there are many replies to continue the position you can play even c3 trying to go for d4 you can first press 3 stopping all the bishop and the knight in coming on g4 then you can play rook e1 and then you can simply continue the game anyway bishop e3 there are already many ways to continue the position currently you are absolutely safe because the king you have castle as soon as possible which is very essential in chess you have already de you have already developed two minor pieces very which is very important and very crucial uh and you can now now it's actually your choice to how you want to continue the game you can either go for playing a4 trying to grab more space on the queen side you can continue the game with c3 which uh which i'm going to recommend you because after c3 there are two ideas first of all you can grab more space on the queen side by playing b4 hitting the bishop and then you can also play a4 grabbing more space. second idea here after playing c3 you can try to plan and try to go for playing d4 where you are, you would be having a complete control in the center and the going and the position uh, will eventually going to favor you and i must tell you that whenever like always try to consider these moves where the bishop and the knight can come out of g4 always try to stop these moves by playing h3 because first of all it prevents the back rank mate in the future and second it also stops the incoming of the bishop and the knight on g4 which can be very useful for you in the future so first of all guys like, if you want to be an expert in any chess opening you can just check out like there is a chess mega database like because i i'm pretty sure that you have uh, that you have heard this chess base 15 chess base 16 like the chess base there is this mega database called where there is thousand lakhs crores of games already uploaded and you what you need to do here is just pick specific opening specific particular line put that on the board and then there would be like thousand lakhs of games already played by the top grandmaster and just select the games where uh, like for example if i'm showing you the white or if you if you want to prepare with the white pieces just check out the games where white won like just saw 100 games just randomly randomly just see 100 games where white won in that particular opening you are searching for and it's not if you are uh, analyzing the game in detail it's very well and good but if you're even not um, analyzing it in detail and you are just simply watching it from like like very fast like here you are just watching it like this still it's going to help you because after watching a couple of 50 to 60 games you're already going to uh, you are already going to recognize some uh, chess patterns that the the players are playing. Like there would be a particular line, there would be a particular idea which is going to be repeated, and it's going to be and it's going to be helping you in the future. So whenever you land in that position, you will already get to know that idea automatically, which is going to help you, which is actually help, help, going to help you tremendously, tremendously. So this is one of the main. I advise from my side from for any opening you are preparing just do that thing just use the mega database and prepare that particular line and just crush your opening so this is the first opening that I'm going to tell you play 1e4 the second opening I'm going to tell you is to play 1d4 the 1e4 first of all is a very aggressive opening whereas g4 is a very positional opening if you're a positional player definitely go for playing up the one d4 the reason is quite simple the most common replies to play knight f6 because if you even try to play knight uh, d5 it's going to soon be transposed in the same variation after knight f6 if you try to play london i'm not going to recommend you to play the london although it's a very good opening but actually it equalizes the game from the start but definitely top grandmaster played but the best i would say is to play c4 and playing the queen's uh the queen's gamble for example e6 playing the knight of three d5 and you can there are in, in after playing g4 i'm going to recommend you the two variation the two main variation first of all if you want to play simple chairs you can simply play knight c3 and you can simply develop the bishop on g5 you can play e3 
you can play bishop d3 you can short castle you can play rook c1 simply developing of the minor pieces castling as soon as possible and you would be having that point position for example after knight c3 if i continue the game with bishop e7 bishop g5 short castle e3 h6 bishop h4 c6 bishop d3 knight g7 short castle and you already see white is perfectly fine white have developed all his minor pieces white is having a clear advantage in the center although it's an equal position you can follow by you can simply continue the game with rook c1 h3 rook u1 and you can continue with queen c2 and e4 trying to break in the center and that's how you play chess that's how you play chess in the second variation i'm going to recommend you and it's actually very highly played by the world champion Magnus Carlsen and definitely also played by very famous grandmasters. But after g5, you can play g3. And this opening is called the Queen's Gambit Catalan opening. After g3, your basic idea here is you want to put the bishop on g2, you want to castle, and you are basically sacrificing the pawn on c4. If your opponent captures the pawn, for example, if black continues with bishop e7, bishop g2, short castle, short castle, and black tries to capture the pawn. You can go for capturing the pawn eventually by playing queen c2. And you can definitely go for capturing the pawn on c4, c4, because it is eventually going to fall down. You can't protect it much. Like b5 looks a bad move, although it's a completely fine move in the top level, but it looks so scary. You see the power of the bishop on g2 now. It's such a healthy piece. You can check out the games in the Catalan opening. I'm recommending in this opening in the particularly in the again in, in the variation of D4. Play try to play the Catalan opening because it's one of the most op better it's one of the best opening, I would say, to gain an, an advantage from the start. Just watch thousand games, hundred games, and try to play that opening on the board as much as possible so that eventually after even losing the games after winning the games you will already get to know the ideas eventually what are the ideas in the catalan opening or in any particular opening you are playing so second idea here uh, second advice and second opening i'm recommending you is the catalan opening in the 1d4 variation third and the final opening that i'm going to recommend you is to play knight f3. The reason I'm going, I'm recommending the opening knight f3 is, knight f3 actually results in many different openings. You can even play the, for example, after knight f3, black continues with d5, very standard. Now it's all your choice. You can even transpose it into the Catalan by changing the move orders like d4, knight f6, c4, e6, g3. You see. We still have the Catalan on the board. Second, you can after d5, uh, after d5, you can even go for playing this, where you you cast last soon as possible by putting your bishop to g2, and now it's all your choice how you want to continue the game. You can continue the game by playing b3, bishop b2, putting both the fiancé to bishop, like on g2 and bishop b2. If you ever develop the bishop like this this bishop is called the fianchet bishop and you can continue the game by playing b3 bishop b2 followed by c4 d4 knight b2 queen c2 and it's a very very interesting opening actually very interesting opening very very comfortable i would say and yeah it's, it's this is pretty much my advice so definitely after after knight of three for example like c uh for like okay it's right there uh g3 Okay, let's not take d5. Let's check that. After knight f6, you can even go for playing c4. And we eventually converted this knight f3 opening into the English opening, where white puts the knight to c3, puts it pawn to e3, g3 bishop g2 castle, and play to, uh, try to play d4. And even after playing knight c3, it's not compulsory for you to put the bishop on g2. You can even play e3 bishop e2 short castle and try to play with d4 b3 bishop b2 and it's already very comfortable so the reason i am recommending the knight f3 because it confuses your opponent that what opening particularly you are going to play and it's on your choice which opening do you want 
to take your opponent in. If you want to take your opponent in the Catalan, you can simply convert it like this. Just change this. Yeah, and we have the Catalan. Just changing the move order and we have the same position. If you want to take the opponent into something else like this, it's it's your it's completely your choice. It's completely your choice. Uh, and actually, there could be a very interesting opening, I would say. After let's take Bishop G two, Knight C six, and this is a, one of the most common reply uh, against this setup. And here you can play D four, and it's the opening name is the Reverse Grunfeld, where Black captures the pawn, Knight takes pawn takes takes takes, and you see if the same setup by opposite color, it's called the Grunfeld. But as we are playing the Grunfeld from the white side, we, ha we are having an extra move because white is the one who, who starts out the game. So you can play c4 and the same idea here is although white is having a tremendous uh, powerful center, but you can simply put threats on the center and eventually white is actually having a very decent position I would say. And it's a very good opening to play. So this is my third advice and third advice to play the opening. So three opening advice I'm going to tell you is to play e4, g4, and f3. And there are particular openings and there are particular variations I'm recommending you. e4, knight f3, bishop c4. Sorry. The Italian from the white side against in one e4 variation. In the d4 variation, I'm recommending you the Catalan. And in the knight f3, I'm, I, I can recommend you the reverse Grunfeld or still the Catalan or still you can go for playing the English opening there is this, you know, just any opening you decide, just stick to it, play it like thousand of times, as many as times you want. And eventually uh, with the time you're going to improve your chess level. So these were the three openings from the white side. And now we are going to discuss three best opening from the black side. So let's check it out. The three openings from the black side, I'm going to recommend you against your 1e4 and d4. Yeah, because e4 and d4 are the most highly sorry played move in the lower level as well as in the higher level. First, let's talk about what to play against 1e4. What could be the best opening to play against 1e4? You can play e5. You can play c5. You can play c6. We have the Karukan. We have the Sicilian. We have the King's Pawn opening. In the King's Pawn opening, if your opponent plays knight f3, play the Petrov. This opening is known as the Petrov defense. And this opening is played by the Ian Napomniashi in the candidates in 2021 against Magnus Carlsen. So you can definitely eventually get to know that it's a very decent opening where white captures the pawn. So what is happening in this opening is, first of all, black is also threatening the pawn on e4 and white is also threatening the pawn on e5. So white takes, black plays g6. Knight f3 and we capture the pawn. And it's completely fine position after d4, d5. So what so what do you see? It's a completely fine opening. White can play bishop d6, short castle. Develop the bishop, play c6, cement his pawn structure like this. Develop the knight to d7, and the game can continue. For example, like let's take bishop d3. Uh let's take anything. Let's take bishop d7. Capturing this doesn't make any sense because you you already just take your knight from me and you are already giving the bishop for the knight, which is not a good thing. So let's take castle. Castle. And rookie one. Developing the pieces. And here we can simply actually come back with the knight. It's completely fine move. Just, just believe me, it's completely fine move. As to knight of six, let's take the move c3. Doing the pawn structure like this. And now there are already many ways to continue the position. I'm going to recommend you to play bishop g6. So what is happening here is, it looks like black is having the same setup, but white have gotten rook, rook to e1 and c3. But still the position is absolutely fine for black. There are already actually many ways to continue the position. You can even go for playing c5. So just study this opening very well, and you can just check out many different games because there are many variations in the Petrov defense. And there is also one one opening. Oh, I would not say opening. It's a gambit. Knight f6. Knight f6. Takes takes, and we have the Stafford gambit. There is a particular op there is a, there is a particular video I've already uploaded. 
it's the most famous video in my, on my channel you can go and check out uh, check it out and just try, write it on the youtube this jeffwood gambit such a deadly opening such a deadly opening if i doesn't know how to play it well you are simply going to win that are my biggest traps in this jeffwood gambit but in the long run you must play this x it's you must play the standard variation the better of defense this is the this is my first recommendation of playing e5 because in the in the higher level you see there is a reason top level grandmasters are playing e5 because it is the most solid opening and it is the best opening that gives you an equal position from this time yeah the the minimum the minimalist can want to do it basically the best opening from black the second main opening i'm going to recommend you is to play cc but first of all a great alert by me a uh, sustainian defense consist uh, the first of all so play it in it and play e5 both the moves are extremely popular extremely they are having both the moves are actually having a rivalry between them but in the top level all uh, in the top level sustainian is playing much but e5 is playing most of the time the reason is quite simple the, the reason white uh, the reason black does not go for playing c5 is after c5 there is a large theory there is a large theory in the sicilian defense which you should know and uh, eventually after like for example if white continues the game with knight f3 d6 uh we have the d4 takes takes knight f6 knight c3 i'm showing you the standard variation that is in defense like playing a6 playing bishop e2 g6 bishop e3 bishop b7 bishop g7 queen d2 short castle long castle so what is happening here is usually in the sicilian defense white castle is long black castle is short white tries to attack on the king side black tries to also attack on the king side queen side but many of the times white is the one who actually successfully attacks on the king side i'm not saying the sicilian is a bad opening it's a completely fantastic opening but if you want to play the sicilian get ready to lose a large number of games but eventually you're going to win if you know a huge amount of theory once you know the, all the theory all the everything in the sicilian then you can then it can definitely go for it but i would recommend you to play if uh, it's your wish you can play c5 there are lakhs thousands of games crores of games in the sicilian defense as well and now it's time for us to discuss the karukam the third opening from my side the c6 after c6 karukan is one of the most suitable opening arc i would say the most comfortable opening from the black side even al rey the firuja the grandmaster plays it white plays g4 we have d5 in the advanced version which uh, like your opponent can capture the pawn your opponent can push the pawn your opponent can develop the knight right right these are the most free common reply if takes you can take and what you need to do here is you need to develop the knight it's all, actually it's already equal you can develop the knight you can develop the bishop you can play you can cast you can play a normal chess if your opponent push the pawn you can play c5 and it's more like a french defense opening but you haven't committed the move e6 so the reason of c5 you can play put your bishop to f5 then play e6 knight c6 and try to go with the same variation and just wait Till your till your opponent tries to develop the knight to f3. Once your opponent tries to de uh, develop the knight on f3, then push put your simply put your bishop to g4, pinning up the knight, and it's the best and the most ideal square for the bishop. And if your opponent tries to capture the pawn, there is a variation in e6, bishop e3. White tries to defend the pawn. You play knight b7, hit both the pawns. Bishop comes trying to pin the knight. We have this knight e7 move trying to play knight c6. and so what is kind of forced to capture the knight if he wants to protect this pawn here we can simply play bd7 uh 
let's check c3 knight c uh there is this knight f5 and it's fine actually fine a knight f5 we are putting pressure over here over here so let's check bishop to d4 trying to protect both both the pawns i'm particularly showing you this line so that how you can recover the pawn like bishop d4 you can actually play knight d4 c d4 and you can play b6 If b4, you can play f2. It's completely fine. Because the opponent can't play a3 because after takes checks the rook is anyway. So eventually after playing b6, the opponent is going to capture the pawn and after queen b6, it's absolutely fine. So we're having the bishop pair against the knight. Which the bishop pair is already very powerful against two knights. And the there is a clear weakness on d4 pawn, there is a clear weakness on the b2 pawn. Eventually you're going to grab the pawn back and black is the one who is already very better. It, uh, so yeah, you can play c5 against advanced variation, develop the knight, develop the bishop and try to put the pressure on the pawn on d4. And you can just check out the openings, man. This, this video consists of the ideas I'm going to be coming. So in the, we have discussed the advanced and the exchange. If your opponent tries to play something like knight c3 or knight d2, it doesn't matter what he plays, you can simply capture the pawn. Knight takes, you can play knight f5. Knight into E2. And what is happening? You are already having the double pawn on the f5, but it's eventually going to help you. The reason is quite simple. Your every piece is automatically open after capturing the knight. Uh, well, for example, if the game continues with knight f3, you can play bishop d6. Bishop d3, you can castle. Castle, you can put the bishop to g4. You can pin up the knight. You can put the knight to d7 eventually, yeah, you can put the knight to d7, queen to c7, put the rook to e8, double on the rook to e5, and it's absolutely fine. This is how you play chess. It's a fine opening. So, you can, from the black side, against one e4, I am recommending you the e5, the Sicilian, and the Karoka. And now it's time for you to quickly discuss what to play against one d4. Against one d4, I'm first recommending with the Grunfeld, which opens up with d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, d5. Uh, still, uh, it's a very comfortable opening from black side. Eventually, what happens is white captures the pawn, black captures the pawn, e4, white is having a good center, black captures the knight, takes take, bishop g7, knight f3, and knight's actually choice after bishop g7. There are already many variations to continue the position, many variations. Uh, basically what is the plan of black, I must tell you that. After playing bishop g7, white, black plays c5 on the next move. Play knight c6, putting pressure on the pawn on d4, castles. And although white is having a very good center, black tries to create a weakness on the center by putting pressure on the center pawn. That's, that is the main idea of black. Uh, uh, there is a large amount of theory on, in the Grunfeld defense. And eventually it's a fine opening, it's a completely fine opening. You can go and play that opening. Just once study it, just watch some videos, watch some courses on this particular opening. You know, you know, there is YouTube now. There is YouTube. There are there is this chessable website where you can get courses online. You can check out that the, uh, this particular Grunfeld opening. It's a very interesting opening. It's a very interesting opening from the black side. The second opening I'm going to recommend you is the if the Bogo Indian. So what happens is you develop like knight f6 e6 and now you give check. The common replies are these. But the most common reply is bishop d2. It doesn't matter what black white plays actually. After play, for example, if white tries to play bishop d2, you can play queen e7. You can play queen e7. Uh, eventually, for now, you can even go for capturing the bishop. It's fine, but queen e7 is actually slightly much better move. If white captures, you can capture with the queen. Now you are hitting, giving a check and also hitting the pawn. So you are, so you are simply going to, after queen d2, you are simply going to be a pawn up and you are better. So capturing the bishop doesn't make any sense. And if there are players who get very impatient and try to play a3, simply hit the bishop. Saying to you, try to do something. Do something. And it's simply captured. Knight takes castle, e4, and here you can play d6. You are putting the pawn structure like this. You are going to eventually play b6, bishop b7. 
knight d7 and try to break with e5 and c5. You can you basically you develop the c8 bishop with b6 and bishop b7. It's a very good opening. It's a very good opening. And the position is equal. Take Karuna Kamura play with it. And there are many players who try to play knight c3. And here we you can still go for playing bishop b4. And we have the Nimza India. It's a very, very, very popular opening against your knight c3. The idea here is quite sim same. After knight f3, you play b6. Develop your bishop like this. Bishop takes, bishop g5. Takes, takes, castle, bishop b3. d6. Uh, you can, I think, you can, you can even go for playing g5. It's completely fine opening. But playing d6 is, is a slow idea, but eventually it's a good idea. Like for example, e4, trying to grab space. You can play h6, bishop h4, e5. And the center is blocked and it's completely fine. If takes, takes. If knight take, you already have something like queen d6, rook e8. And you see these double pawns, this single pawns, this weakness, the queen is still in the center. Black is actually very comfortable. So basically, you put the knight to f6, put the e pawn on e6, and you play bishop. If the knight is on c3 and we play this opening, we have the Nimzo. If you, the knight is on f3 and then you play that, we have the Bogo, Bogo India. So this is my second advice to play the Nimzo or the Bogo, Bogo Indian. The third advice, a very strong and a very solid advice, d5, knight c3, playing c6. We have the semi-slab on the board. We have the, we have the semi-slab. And what is the idea of semi-slab here is, it opens up the queen and the bishop. And eventually, you can even capture the, or go for capturing the pawn on c4 and defend it by playing d5. And actually, you can even go for playing a6 and then absolutely you can go for capturing the pawn on c4. c4. And eventually, after playing c6, most of the times your opponent will capture the pawn and you can simply capture the pawn back with the e-pawn. And you see, your pieces are now free. You can simply feel free to develop all your minor pieces. It's fine. It's a fine opening. Yeah, absolutely fine. And there's a very interesting opening actually. I want to share. I want to share. After bishop g5, you can play knight d7. After e3, you can play queen f5. It's the opening name is the Cambridge Spring Opening. Magnus Carlsen plays it very high, very much in this particular variation. And what happens is many times you put the bishop uh, put pressure on the bishop on g5 with the queen, like horizontally. And now there are some crazy ideas coming after knight e4. Pinning up this knight on c3. And you can also put develop the bishop like on b4. Putting more pressure on the knight to c3. And it's a very comfortable opening from white. It's a very good opening. Oh sorry, very good opening from black, what I'm saying. It's a, it's a very good opening to equalize the position. And yeah, it's very comfortable. You can just go and check out the game. Uh, it's very good opening. Uh, so from the black side against one d4, you can play the Grunfeld. You can, uh, you can play like, okay, I'll just show you. You can play the Grunfeld. Second, you can go for playing the Bobo Indian. You can go for playing the Nimza Indian. Eight does the same. Uh, and third idea here is you can go for playing the semi slab. Very solid, very solid. In, in 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 this particular opening after bishop g5 you can sorry after bishop g5 there comes knight d7 and now comes queen d5 if your opponent plays something else you can simply try to play a6 capture this pawn and try to develop with the bishop d7 short castle eventually there is the idea of playing bishop g6 knight d7 short castle rook eight and try to open with break with e5 it's very comfortable from this it's absolutely fine the this opening name is semi slab where you put the pawns like this a triangle triangular setup uh, and yeah I, actually i think i missed something in one e4 variation uh which is after one e4 if your opponent tries to press the karo khan you can go for exchanging the karo khan and you can simply develop the minor pieces it's already very comfortable there is also one variation you can where you play c4 after trading the pawn uh, and if black takes you can capture with the bishop 
although you are having an isolated pawn on the d file, but it actually gives white pretty much good counterplay. Uh, a very fast development and it's very comfortable for white eventually. And whenever black puts e, plays a6, you can find the opportunity to play d5, remove the isolated pawn, and you are having a very comfortable position. Uh, the second uh, in the d5 in the Sicilian variation, you can play knight f3, d6, d4, take takes, knight f6, knight c3, a6, bishop e2, e5. Uh, now e5, e6, and g6. These three are the most common moves. All the position player likes to play g6, and you can now continue the game with like here, like this. You castle long, you castle short, and now you attack with g4, h4, and h5. Just look out, I mean, there are many, then thousands of games in this particular variation where white castles long, black castle short. And you can just check out how to continue the position. Just check out different variations in e6, e5, and g6. These three are the main variations, or else there are some. There are still many Sicilian. There are different Sicilian actually. After g6, the knight of variation is the most common. You can have the time mano in the in the board, uh, where we have this kind of thing, uh, something like this, and it's very irritating. Um, it's actually completely fine after this and now you can com continue with queen d4 it's very comfortable you hit the bishop you hit the pawn half of takes takes it's absolutely fine quite comfortable just check out in the so i think i've covered today's topic uh from the white side just giving you a quick recap you can play one e4 g4 and f3 with the black pieces against 1e4, you can play the e5, the king's pawn opening, the Sicilian, and the Karo Khan. Against d4, you can play the Grunfeld. You can play the uh, you can play the Bogo Indian like this. And third, you can play the semi club, which is absolutely solid. I I would give you a highly recommend advice to go for play that go for playing that open. Uh, and yeah, because okay in the in the in the of uh, in the bogo indian i i would say that in the, against one d4 player against one d4 there are many players who think that the bishop on c8 never gets an opportunity to, to develop it's a perfect opening like for like this like let's take stick you play b6 and you can develop the bishop like this and do not commit the pawn on d5 actually you can go faster playing bishop b5 you can play d5 capture the pawn and it's absolutely fine but you, the best re, uh, the best idea here is to play, put the bishop on b7, castle, queen e7, d6, knight d7, e5. That's how you continue the game. And just check, check out games uh, in the particular opening you are going to select from by watching the video. Uh, and if this video actually helped you to improve your chess skills and to gain you some knowledge, then make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. And our goal is to reach 5,000 subscribers during this month. So make sure to subscribe the red button, click the red button and make sure to click the notification bell as well. I'm going to uh, put many videos in the uh, in the in that particular video, in the particular opening that I'm, I have su suggested you so that you can check out and get a complete knowledge of it. So I'm going to co come up with these interesting videos like this. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and what and nothing and nothing else. So. Till then, stay tuned and keep watching One Shot Chess.